All right, hello there. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to carve a spoon with a gouge, uh, just a palm gouge here, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I go cross grain at first uh, with some woods. If it's a birch, maybe if it's really dry, you might need to go with the grain. Like I'm going to go here, uh, mostly with a gouge. You can go with the grain because you can get much better pressure and control uh, because the your hand and the power is going to be going in the direction of the tool. You can see that I put my palm up against the wood and uh, it gives you a lot of power without having to uh, sacrifice safety. It's a real useful little cut there, putting your palm up uh, on, the, on the edge of the tool. See it again there. Yeah. Use it with V tools and whatnot too. So you can see this happens pretty fast. I made a lot of spoons like this even though it's been a while. Um, and this is just much easier. The spoon knives are a little hard to use. Uh, they may be a little bit expensive. You may just not have one and you want to try spoon carving. And uh, this is a very feasible way. I know there's another video of a guy um, doing a gouge carving of a spoon on YouTube. But um, he like had the spoon in a vise and he was using a, using a mallet and whatnot. And um, I don't I don't know. I mean I just don't I don't do that. So I wanted to show you guys. Uh, just basically this is possible and how I do it and uh, I did a lot of these with just my like um, flex cut traveling roll uh, this is size it's about this shape and then um, also uh, if you have some other uh, sweeps of gouge uh, more shallow sweep and you can you know do some kind of contour shaping if you watch my other spoon carving videos uh, you hit the back of the spoon around the edges and whatnot and this is about a, I think this is a seven sweep, so you'd want to get a five and a, maybe a three if you want to do some contour upside down work. And um, so the rest of the spoon before this, if you want to see that happen, um, there's a few videos on my page. Uh, very specifically, there's an eating spoon, and it's the same wood and everything is on the same day or earlier in the day. And I'll show you how to axe out that uh, that shape. And uh, you really don't even need to do that again on my my first stuff. Just had a knife and just took my time in a palm gouge. This is the upside down contour work I was talking about. I don't know what it's called, but you turn the gouge upside down and you get a contoured shape. Uh, and uh, so in the beginning, you'll use a lot of sandpaper, so it's not super necessary, but uh, it's a real fun thing to do. And um, getting getting in the, the bowl, um, one of the hardest things to do is getting the grain to meet up on because you're going downhill in both directions and they'll meet in the middle at the bottom of the bowl of that spoon and it's real hard to get to do that so you just kind of practice over time you'll start to get it down really you need to have a, a little tiny flat spot at the bottom so you can have them meet up um, and really again you'll use sandpaper in the beginning so uh, just don't make a hole in your spoon stop at some point and uh, you just grab the sandpaper and smooth it out so, using this big old knife, get some better shape on here, and yeah, I'll show the rest of this, just um, kind of basic carving stuff, kind of already showed what I wanted to show, which is just um, really how well the, you know, a palm gouge can work when carving a spoon. Um, I, I was doing this a long time ago, and I was watching guys like Robin Wood, he was struggling to find good spoon knife makers and um, uh, they were saying that's like the more old school way to use a spoon knife but I'm not so sure because if you go look at some of his blog entries see how hard of a time he had to make the spoon knives and kind of the skill level it takes to use them and if you look at how hard it is really how easy it is to make a gouge work properly just like a palm gouge like this um, I think probably that kind of spoon carving was around beforehand. Again, I may be wrong, but probably, you know, probably gouges came before spoon knives. And then it probably took some kind of uh, culture built around spoons. And there, there is uh, a lot of fun history around spoons. Um, probably the most popular is the love spoons. And, um, you know, it's kind of more just uh, carving spoons for fun and because they are there I mean they're they're super fun to carve um, you know I have so many spoons this wood is cotton wood and it turned out um, it's not good wood for eating but it's a nice to carve 
So, and I'm not, I'm not worried about it, you know. So, because you know, the of my other carving, doing wood spirits and stuff, it's very detailed, and um, I, I don't know. Uh, when you're trying to make some specific shape, you often get kind of lost and you're thinking too much and all that. And and doing the spoons, you get to do a lot of long cuts. You know, you got a nice feel of the blade going through some nice wood, and um, it's very relaxing. So it's a nice simple shape to kind of meditate on and and work on. It's I carve a lot of spoons. Um, it's kind of more in the summertime, not as much in the winter because of the wood and everything, but, um, I mean, I, I spend almost as much time carving spoons as I do other stuff, so it's, it's a lot of time. But I, I definitely suggest that, yeah, there's almost like a religion built up around carving spoons. And uh, now there's, um, in Europe, there's Spoon Fest. Man, I want to go so bad. They need to get like a uh, sponsorship or like a, I don't know can't afford to freaking travel to Europe to go camp out and carve spoons one day one day um, so anyway what was I saying yeah so there was there's some other people who have like cultural things I was reading I think somebody I don't know who it was they you're supposed to bring like a cedar spoon uh, when you like go visit somebody's house which is kind of weird because I don't know there's some mixed feelings about how s healthy cedar is Anyway, I'll get off that. Use walnut or sycamore, and after it's done, uh, heat up some walnut oil or some food safe mineral oil, rub it in there, cover it with plastic for two to three days, take it out, wipe it off, and then wash it real good so that the top layer is gone. You just want the oil on the inside, uh, so it doesn't taste like oil or anything. And then now uh, you're ready to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and carve safe.